My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of the entire series of Better Call Saul and this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it go and watch it then come back and watch this review because I will be going in depth. Now Breaking Bad is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's absolute perfection and I heard great things about this show. So I went into this show with very high expectations and even though it didn't quite live up to them, I still think this is a damn good show. And I don't think comparing it to Breaking Bad is very fair. They're completely different shows. I think it's much more fitting to compare this to Bojack Horseman or to Barry because they have more in common. I do like how this show takes its time and how it's a patient character study. I think the performances are all fantastic. I think the story is compelling when it needs to be. I've got issues, but there's definitely a lot more positives than negatives. But let's get into the characters and the performances, first with Bob Odenkirk, who gives the best performance of his career here. The way that he turns a comedic relief character from Breaking Bad into this multi layered tragic character and how you buy each and every beat of it, it's incredibly impressive. And on top of that, I just love the way this character is written. You know, there's one flashback early on which sums him up so perfectly, how we see that his dad has a huge heart, he's always helping people, and instead of learning from his dad, he learned from the people taking advantage of his dad's heart. I think that says a lot about him because he does take advantage of people's kindness and generosity time and time again. He's always putting himself first and he's just caught, him caught up in this terrible cycle where he does something bad, he gets away with it and he never accepts full responsibility. And there are some things that he does do that he does with the best of intentions but still objectively wrong like everything regarding Macy Vorde. So I think there's lots of different layers to the character in that regard, but regarding his, his relationship with his brother and where that goes, I think adds a tragic backstory to him, where how after that he just turns, him off, turns himself off emotionally and how he just becomes this persona of Saul Goodman more and more over time. It's only after he loses Kim as well that he just fully loses himself to that Saul Goodman eccentric personality. So when you see Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and he's all upbeat and eccentric, it's just the result of a broken man trying to hide it the best he can. And I think that just makes him a very great character. Now that said, I like where the character ends up or at least the idea of it, but I think they could have done it better. None of the stuff regarding Gene really worked for me all too well and I just think that his last redeeming act comes out of nowhere and it just feels completely out of character for him. You know, what made him do that change? You know, he hears that Kim accepted responsibility so he does too but I just, for a character who just never learns for him to change everything about himself so drastically then, I don't buy it. But that said, I still found the character work behind him to be very impressive. And I do think Rhea Seahorn is also fantastic here. She's great throughout as she just has this cool, calm personality. But in the last act, Rhea Seahorn just really delivers. You know, there's that scene where she's just breaking down on the bust and it's so powerful. And the big difference between her and Jimmy is that she's more reflective. She tries to clean up the mess while Jimmy just ignores it. And that's seen so perfectly in this one episode where they're throwing glass bottles off the balcony. And then the next day, Jimmy just leaves it for someone else to clean up while she takes the initiative and she does it herself. When you see those kind of personalities come into play in the last season, you do find it satisfying. And I do love how she feels all repressed to a certain degree with always working under someone who she doesn't like and how she wants to take charge of her own life and she takes Macy Vorde from HHM and she works as a solo practitioner 
and how she tries to excel only for her to get into an accident and that sets her back so she ends up working with another business and how she's just trying to find that right balance between not feeling like she's being watched under a microscope and being free. So considering that her desire is more freedom to do what she wants, there's a huge attractive element to Jimmy who just does what he wants to do whenever he wants. So you understand the relationship on that level as well. So I think in that way, the character has lots of complexities behind her. That said, her breaking bad at the end of season 5, I didn't quite buy. I wish season 5 built to that tone in a, a more effective manner. But I still love this character and I think Rhea Seahorn is so brilliant throughout. And like I said about Kim, you understand why they're together and I do think their relationship is really well developed. But if I'm being honest, I do think it moves a little too fast too soon. Like they get together at the beginning of season 2 so there's just that whole thing where you there's nowhere left for them to go. They eventually get married, but it doesn't feel like a big event, and then it just goes back to how it was. So there's no real progression or development in their relationship until later on. So I wish they did a bit more there, but you still understand why the characters care for each other. And despite the fact that they were really bad for each other, when they break up, you still feel devastated. You feel the emotional weight behind it. So I really like that. And I also think Michael McKean does an incredible job as Chuck. You know, Chuck is someone who plays by the rules, he respects the law and what it stands for, and he's smart and objectively correct for most things. The only thing that holds him back is that he's completely heartless, and he just doesn't approach things in the right way. My big issue with this character is that I think everything with him is perfection, I just wanted more of him. Like after he dies, we get that one flashback with him and Jimmy at the karaoke club and it kind of reminds you of what's been lost. And I wish we leaned into that a bit more and had flashbacks throughout the back half of the show, but I still think he does a great job and I really love the complexities of the brothers' relationship. How Jimmy always wanted his brother's approval. And with Chuck being a well-respected lawyer, Jimmy thought that if he goes into law as well, he could maybe earn Chuck's respect that way. But Jimmy's not capable of changing who he is. He's not going into it for a natural love for the law. So he still does what Jimmy does. He tries to find loopholes. He cuts corners. And the fact that Jimmy succeeds in that, it make, starts to make Chuck resent him. And like the fact that such an immoral person represents the law and the fact that he gets away with it and the fact that everyone seems to love Jimmy more, Chuck's hatred for and resentment for Jimmy starts to build. And I got the sense that it just kind of manifested itself with this electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And because of that, it makes it so Jimmy is there to help him. Jimmy's always there for him. The two need each other in some ways, but they're so bad for each other. And I do like that despite everything bad that Jimmy does towards Chuck, you can still see that he genuinely cares for him. He took zero satisfaction in humiliating him in ch chicanery. So after he does that and his brother tells him, the truth is he just never cared for him all that much. That's the moment that Jimmy truly broke. What ends up killing what good was in Jimmy. So I think all of that stuff is really compelling, really complex. Absolutely love it. It's like I said, Chuck is objectively correct about his assessment of Jimmy. You see that definitely more as the show goes on. But he just is so heartless that it's hard to root for him. But he's correct. And ah, I just love when storytelling does that. You also got yourself Patrick Fabian, who I think does a really great job as Howard. I love how he starts off as this douche in the first season. But then you start to realize why he was such a douche. And it adds some additional layers to his characters, where it's due to his loyalties to Chuck. And then we see him progress and try to become a better person throughout the series. And even tries to right his wrongs and offers Jimmy a job. But Jimmy acts like a child, he and Kim 
have this giant plan to humiliate him and they succeed and by doing so they got him killed and he's forever humiliated his legacy is done for they destroyed a man and for what so i think there's a tragic aspect to his character as well that i really like and then you've also got mike amanda who i'm just going to say this he's good in this show he gives a good performance i just don't think that him as an actor is the most captivating he doesn't have it, you know, that kind of screen presence that so many actors hope they have. He just doesn't have it. Like, I do like aspects of this character, how he's trying to be a good person in an environment where it's impossible. And I like how he's trying to take down Hector. And that pill scene is super intense. And I love how he, how Gus figures out his plan and how he uses that to blackmail him and how he's just stuck in this terrible situation. And... In concept, thematically, I love all of that, but emotionally, I just never connected to his plot. And then you've got Jonathan Banks, who I'm not going to lie, the first time I saw him, his inclusion felt a little fan service and I still don't think we needed an entire episode of his backstory, no matter how good it is. And I do love how this character is so smart and resourceful, like for goodness sakes, he took apart an entire car, he turns a horse into a weapon. I love all that and I love his moral code, especially when Nacho pays him 25 grand to take down Tuco and when he has to go back on that, he gives the money back to Nacho. He's just a man with principle. So when he eventually kills Warner Ziegler, I just don't buy it for a single second. Like I just don't buy that he wouldn't kill some of the worst scumbags and then he would kill this guy. I just don't buy that transformation. And on top of that, he's just given nothing to do. His storyline isn't as fascinating or interesting as it should be. I do like it when we see him with Jimmy, but we don't get enough of that. Then you've also got Gene Carla Esposito, who I think gives a great performance. He's a great character. And I loved seeing him balance the manager of a chicken place of him and then the cartel side. I think that's really great. I just wish he had more to do. Like, I don't think I mentioned him all too much in my reviews because what was there to say? I like his scene with Hector. I don't have much else to say besides that. Then you've got Tony Dalton, who is a true highlight of this show. He is so damn good as Lalo. He's so charismatic and filled with personality. He's charming. And he's a complete badass when he needs to be. He, whenever he's on screen, you can't look away. Great performance. You also got Kerry Cundin, who I think gives a great, uh, not a great, but a good performance. You've got Mark Magalas, who's good. You love to hate him. You've got Lavo Campbell as Hugh, who's not in it a bunch, but he's just so likable when he is. All of us people down in Louisiana just love him. Then you've got Ed Begley Jr. as Cliff, who's good. Dennis Bort... <laughs> the guy who plays Rick Squats. The guy that Kim ends up working for. He's good. You also got Ray Campbell as Tyrus, who I think does a fine job, but he has nothing to do. Then you've also got Juan Carlos Cantu, who plays uh, Nacho's dad, and I don't think he was all too good. Um, just a very bland character. He's supposed to represent Nacho's moral compass, kind of like how Kim and Chuck were at one point Jimmy's moral compass, but... I just, they, he needed more development. Then you've got Jessica Ines as Erin Brill, who's not in it a bunch, but she does a good job as that really annoying, bitchy co-worker. You've got John Christian Love as Ernesto, who I do like, and I love the fact that he always helps Jimmy out, even though it ends up biting him in the ass. You've got yourself, Pedro Seth as Bill Oakley, he's the guy who's always at the vending machine, and I just like how we see him throughout the series, and how he kind of has his own mini arc from being a nobody loyal, to being jealous of Jimmy, and by the end, he seems to be pretty successful, and I liked him whenever he was on screen. And then you've got Tina Parker as Francisca, who I love the fact that we kind of find out why she doesn't seem to like Jimmy all too much in Breaking Bad. It was just that she liked Kim and she wanted to work for Kim and she just put up with Jimmy, but she's just working for Jimmy. It's, yeah, I like that. And then you've got yourself Josh Fandon, Haley Holmes, and Julian Benfigado, 
who play the three film students that Jimmy works with time and time again. They're not in it a bunch, but you know, I, I just think this show does a good job with the supporting characters who you don't see all too often. But if you get talking about the plot, this is when most of my issues start to shine because the characters are complex, very well written, even though they become a bit stagnant in sections and I'll touch on that a bit more. But when you get to plot, I do have a big issue with it. And it's that the show wants to be both serialized storytelling and episodic. And I don't think it works. Like lots of the episodes do have a filler quality to them. And even though the character writing is strong, the fact that they're surrounded by filler material just doesn't give them the service they deserve. Because so much of what happens just doesn't feel relevant. Like Hugh being arrested, you could write that out. The Ketamans, you could write them out. The cell phone plot, you could write that out, and yes you can. Jimmy was already helping scumbags at the very start. The construction lot in season 5 could be written out. But you know what can't be written out? Sam Piper and Mesa Vorde. And that's when the show's at its best. Sam Piper gave Jimmy a chance to work with HHM, only for them to push him out, which creates conflict between Jimmy and Chuck with Kim and Howard being directly impacted by it. And then Macy Vorde put Kim up against Chuck and Howard, and that pushes Jimmy to help her in a way that affects his relationship with Chuck. So all of that stuff is character-centric. And that's when the show absolutely shines. And you do got this other plot with the cartel and double agents and betrayals. But the characters in that plot are just so irrelevant that it's kind of less interesting. Like, they gave the less compelling background characters what should be stronger material. And they gave the stronger characters weaker material in moments. You know, like Mike's storyline... It is completely disconnected from everything else, and it just feels unneeded. Yes, they intertwine a few different times, but not nearly enough for it to feel like one cohesive vision behind the show. It feels like Jimmy, Kim, Howard, and Chuck, and then uh, Gus and Mike and Nacho and Lalo and all that stuff. Now, some of the writing I do like is the fact that lots of the plans and schemes that go on in this show are kind of easy to predict, but that's a positive because it means that we actually know the characters and how they'll act. Like when I predicted Chuck's plan in season three, it's just because I've gotten to know how he thinks. I also think this show does manage to be really funny. It's much more lighthearted than Breaking Bad, and I think that's a very good thing. Like, some of the montages just crack me up, whether it's Jimmy trying to get fired, or delaying the construction, or, I don't know, some of the other scams he pulls, I think some of that's really funny, and I do think this show is very well shot. But I do think there is a way to fix this show. Now, season one begins with lots of random plots, and I think it should have just been the Ketterman's case. No too cool. No Nacho. They can get introduced in Mike's plot. But just focus on the Ketterman's case. And have Jimmy trying to help HHM. Specifically came out with it. And he tells his brother about it. You know make that the whole focus. And then we go into the Sandpiper case. So it's not this storyline. This one. This one. It's this one that transitions into this one. That would have been good. Season 2 and 3 just leave alone for the most part. You could have the second half of season 3 be Jimmy walking as not a loyal instead of doing an entire season 4 arc for that. You could have Chuck die at the end and then after he dies have a time jump. Well, we see Jimmy's now a loyal under the name of Saul Goodman and how he gets involved with Walsh and Walsh people and eventually Lalo and we don't need five episodes of Jimmy selling cell phones and helping Hugh and defending this guy. We just get rid of all that and being dead serious. We don't need a whole season of the mess lab construction. I don't I don't really care. So I think the big way that it could have been fixed is combine seasons four and five. I know people think those are the two best seasons. I strongly disagree. Put them together and you've got yourself a much tighter series with less filler and padding and it'll be all the better for it. And then after Chuck's trial, well I guess technically Jimmy's trial, but after Shikinui, 
that's when you can get Jimmy and Kim together. So then they're not together too early on. I also think you should change the Gene storyline to include the Kettlemans instead of Pat Healy and Carol Burnett. Didn't need any of that. And I didn't really talk about how each season began with Gene. And I do like that in terms of build-up. I just didn't talk about it because by the end of the season, I kind of forgot about it. But I do like how they built up to that. I just wish that the last few episodes didn't slow down to the extent that they did. But look, I still really like this show. There's some excellent character writing here and it really highlights complexities of certain relationships. And when the story feels meaningful and progresses the character, that's when the show is at its absolute best. And I do like how patient it is. There's just a bit too much irrelevant and filler material. Some of the characters and relationships become stagnant with little to do and that don't evolve. Well, they're just going on with little progression. And the plots do feel heavily connected. So I believe if you tighten it up and combine seasons 4 and 5... You could have had yourself an incredible show and it doesn't get to that level but it still gets to a level of a damn good season of television and it's solid and definitely worth checking out. So I'm going to go ahead and give Better Call Saul the entire series a 7 out of 10. I know it's all subjective but the people who say this show is on the same level or better than Breaking Bad I just strongly disagree with. Strongly. But I do enjoy this show. I really do. But have you seen Better Call Saul? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon and Gavin out.